So far, we have looked at what current is, how we define current. And today, we're going to look at a context of current in a conductor in a circuit, usually. So I have here my circuit. All the current is already there. Is it moving, though? Is it moving? No, nobody's moving. So the charges already exist in everything. All the negative charge electrons everywhere. But they're not moving because the circuit is not complete. Once I connect up this resistor, for example, it allows the circuit, you know, to be complete. It's what we call a closed circuit. And now charges can move. Uh, if you haven't noticed something weird, I'm going to tell you that once upon a time, people thought that char a current was positive charge moving. And that's why we define current as flowing in this direction, out from the positive of the battery. Can I see the symbol? Yeah, so this is the positive side of the battery, out from positive and then back to negative. But actually, in real life, it's the other way. This is conventional current. Huh? Real life expectation is, uh, real life reality is actually the other way. Look carefully, huh? this one here, electron is moving to the left, but current is moving to the right because people, scientists, wrongfully thought that current is positive charge moving. So, a little bit more on that. What about eraser? Does it, can it conduct? Not, not as, mm, no, the electron is not really moving. Hmm, interesting. How do some materials are able to conduct and some cannot? Oh, yo, yo, this one too much already. Fires are more. It turns out that currents can only flow under normal circumstances in materials called conductors. So electrical conductor is a substance where charge carriers can move between atoms when you apply a voltage uh, to the material. So remember, all the negative, 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 negative is inside. Where the negative come from? Uh? Why some material can, some cannot? Well, because, for example, this is uh, copper, copper atoms. Okay, lots of lots of atoms inside there. And within each atom, you get something like this. Ooh, it looks like chemistry. Don't worry about it. The main thing you need to know is that there can be charge carriers. So you see this lonely electron outside? It's so lonely. And it can probably, with some little bit of pushing, it will fly away. Woo, I am free. Free electron to fly anywhere at once. So that's where the, the, the electrons are there to drift around the material once you apply a voltage. Let's look at a little bit more detail of how that works. So here's all our electrons already chilling. I draw a few already inside our conductor. Okay, now we are going to apply a voltage. What is a voltage? Well, voltage means you connect it to a battery. So on one end, this will be a very high potential V. And on the other end, you're going to put a low potential V. That's so there's a difference huh? from high flow to low. Remember the marble in our previous video? From one end, it's very high. You release, it go down to low. So high to low. Okay, high potential, low potential. And we have our currents flowing in this direction from high towards the low. So here we still have current coming out. Huh? This is current. Current is the same. What goes in must come out. Okay, tricky thing is current is going to the right. But all these little, little electrons, huh? they will be going to the left roughly. So they all will be jiggling around a little bit. Maybe they bump into somebody. Uh, maybe here they bump up and go down. Uh. They are roughly, roughly drifting to the left. That is what we call a drift velocity. I'm going to write here. Drift velocity V. Small v. So the main challenge is, can we find an equation to relate current to... Drift velocity, for example, how fast these guys are drifting along to the left. Okay, this is the derivation you must know because they will ask you in paper two. The first thing we're going to look at is a little bit more on drift velocity. So drift velocity means you'll be traveling the length L in a certain unit time, right? So the first point here I'm going to write here is that drift velocity can be expressed as V, it is the average speed, okay? Everyone is up and down a bit, okay? So V velocity equals to rate of change of displacement. Back to kinematics, or in this case, will be dl dt. This length per unit time. That's number one. 
Number two, actually, how many people are drifting inside here? Because all of them contribute to the current, remember? Each of these little electron carries a little, char a little uh, charge. E, remember? Negative 1E is their charge. Negative 1E, negative 1E, negative 1E. So in the previous video, we talked about the definition of current. So we need to consider how many of these fellas are there. This is how we do it. So number two, fact number two. There's this thing called the number density Ooh, in the material of a material. In this case, I don't know what material is this, but each material got its own number density. We use a symbol small n for this, and this will be the number of free electrons per unit volume of the material. Remember, just now we say all the atom got free electron, they can come out one, right? So how many of these free electrons are there per unit volume? How many of them are ready to fly? Draw one more here. Ah, there we go. Okay. Uh, we can, we can, I guess we could put in some more equations here. This one can be number of charge carriers, I'm going to call this NQ, over volume big V with this thing. So sometimes charge carriers are electrons, sometimes it's just other things. We'll find out soon. Okay, I think we got a number to represent it. Okay, the next thing, I think we are ready to go to our definition. So, from the definition, from Q equals to I, T. Remember this? Our previous definition? Okay, we can rearrange this and say, hey, maybe we do I equals to Q over T. Alright, so current... Total charge. What is total charge? You see, ah, uh, this year if we we wanna we wanna we wanna play the M meter, remember, and we say, okay, I'm gonna keep my eye on this highlighted line and watch how many of these charge carriers come by each second. So I can say number times the charge carrier in this case electron over t, right? But how many of these number are there? Ah, that's where we come to this. The number of free charge carriers. So from this NQ, we can say the number of charge carriers equals to number density times volume. So I'm going to sub that inside here. So here we will have NVE over T. And this will give me the total number of charge carriers that come out or pass by a point. Next thing. What have we not used? Drift velocity. Uh, hmm. How do we use drift velocity? How do we include drift velocity? One thing that we have not used is actually the cross-section area. So this cross-section area actually does influence some things. Okay, so assume this cross-section area is A. For a circle, you can have any shape, but in this case, our cross-section area is a circle, so this will be pi r square and the volume of this whole thing the whole cylinder i'm gonna write i guess we write one more here v volume of cylinder or actually any object a times l i'm not going to sub in the pi l pi r square because we don't have that information we don't have r square in the future you may encounter some questions with the r square anyway v equals to al so let's sub that in as well so n times a l times e over t. Ah, we are ready for our final substitution. So remember drift velocity is d l d t. Change in length, change in time, or you could say l over t. So we see that pattern right here, l over t. So we can say, hey, that's, that's, that's our drift velocity. So we can say, N, A, drift velocity, and E. That will be how you can calculate the current based on the dimension, the material, the velocity, and the electron elementary charge. So from this, you can actually come up with a general formula. I'm going to write that here. So, this one, for all kinds of things, current will be NAVE or NAVQ. This equation is given in the first page 
of every question paper in a data formula sheet, but you need to know how to use it. Okay, so cross-section area, this is our drift speed or drift velocity. This Q is the charge carriers. What's the charge of the charge carrier? And here, number density. Are you using copper or are you using aluminum? What are you using? Okay, it's a very important equation that you need to know how to derive the steps. All right. Before I end the video, one more reminder, okay, that conventional current is assuming positive charge is flowing. So you can see I draw the positive. This is conventional current, the direction where it will be flowing. But in real life, we don't talk about this. Electrons are actually flowing opposite direction to conventional current. <sighs> So I'm going to draw a circuit down here to remind us as well when we, before we go to all the complicated stuff. So remember we saw the battery. Here's a battery. Positive, negative. And if you connect it to an external circuit, like say with one resistor here. Wow, my, my lines are so straight huh, today. Ah, yeah, we draw current as coming out this way. Out from the positive into the negative. But... In real life, electrons are moving this way in the opposite direction of conventional current I. Oh my goodness. Okay, let's draw a few more here. Nah. Electron opposite direction to current. I think that's pretty much it. So conventional current and actual electrons moving. So next up in the examples video, we'll see all kinds of different different shapes here we have a cylinder, right? It's a nice, simple cylinder. But you can prepare yourself to see all kinds of shapes. Like maybe it's a, maybe it's a square. What's the cross-section area here? Ah, maybe it's a cone. Ooh, the area is changing. How does the drift velocity change? Maybe it's a... I don't know what else to draw. Like this, and then like this, and then like this. Ah, maybe it's a weird shape. And you're still sending a current through all this stuff. Okay, so you just need to stay calm, try out some past your questions, and you'll see how to tackle different, different kinds of shapes when the cross section area A is changing. How does that affect the drift velocity? Because the number one fact is what goes in must come out. The current going in, same as current coming out. Current going in, same as current coming out. Mm. So how does the current change when you're inside one of these weird shapes? That's all for this video. We'll see you in the examples videos.